Hello everyone, how are you? I thought I would show you my process of making an envelope, an art envelope journal. Um, I have a 6x9 manila envelope and I've folded it in half and here I've just got a piece of heavy cardboard and putting some double sided tape down on it. I've just roughly eyeballed the measurements so that I could slip the card into the centre of the manila envelope. I like just putting some kind of cardboard in there just so that it strengthens up the spine a bit. Um, this is a an art journal that I'm making for a lovely little girl named Lily who's having a birthday um, in the middle of November and I just thought I would like to make her something special and I hope she really likes it. I think she will. She's a really good kid. So now I'm going to gesso the front and back and then I'll also gesso the inside of the envelope. At the beginning I just thought that I was going to paint the outside up um, that's why I decided to gesso it but I don't know I think it's a good idea to gesso it anyway it just puts a little bit more added strength into the envelope so I'm giving it a good dry with my heat gun and now I'm putting the gesso on the inside of the envelope And I wasn't sure what I was going to do. This envelope was actually sent to me and it's got one of those metal closures on it. So I w wasn't really sure if I was going to keep the closure or not keep it or not use it. I think in the end I didn't end up using it. And I also gessoed the envelope flap. And now I'm just going to strengthen up the flap by using a bit of the cardboard. So just roughly measured it out and cut it down to size. And now putting some double sided tape on it. And then I'll just slip it inside the envelope. Oh, I also put some tacky glue on it just so that it gives me a little bit of room for for slipping it around so that it fits properly. There we go. And burnishing it down to make sure it's stuck properly. Trimming off the excess bit of cardboard on the flap. And then I'll just use a ruler to Recrease the fold. Now I've grabbed out a few shades of purple acrylic paint and I'm just blotting it on, blotting it on everywhere. <laughs> with an old makeup sponge. I wasn't really sure on how I was going to decorate it at this point. All I knew was that I needed to get some paint down on the cover.
And sorry about the noise of the plane. So I put the paint on the front and back pages and I've also put some on that little flap. And now I'm just going around filling up a few spots that I'd missed and using a little bit of white acrylic just to put a few little highlights here and there on the cover. Just about finished, I think. Not quite. <laughs> That's it. You just, you could just go on forever and ever, couldn't you? Well, I know I could sometimes. So that's finished now. Now I've I've let given it a good dry, um, and I'm working on the inside cover of the book, and I've put a strip of double-sided tape right along the centre, and then on either side of the tape, I've just put a a thin layer lay a thin line of. Um, Tacky glue, that's our phone. I hope my husband gets it. With that double sided tape, I have put a strip of organza ribbon. So I'm going to use the ribbon as like a wrap around on the journal for a closure. And I've also found a lovely patterned flower patterned piece of paper and I've decided to stick that to the for the inside cover and before I stick it down I'm just going around and adding a little bit more of that purple paint around the edges so that I can cover up the um, the actual color col color of the envelope So just making sure I get the crease right for the inside because one side of the journal is just a little bit shorter than the other side. See I had the paper around the wrong way then but I turned it round. Now I'm just using the double sided tape. And I'm putting the tape down so that I can attach the paper to, for the inside cover, to the inside cover. And I'll get all the tape down first before I actually stick the paper down. Okay, so that's all the double-sided tape down. Now making sure I've got it the right way. So I'm going to remove the strips off the back of that and lay one side down and then I'll lay the other side down. It's just a lot easier than trying to do it to do the whole lot at once. And I've put a bit of um, glue stick on there, a little bit of wet glue, giving it a good burnish down, make sure it's stuck and now do the other side. I do just roughly measure around 
the inside of the envelope on the paper because once I get that stuck down I'm going to put a few little slits on that end of the pattern paper so that I can fold it over the lip of the envelope and using the glue stick again in between the double sided tape so there's the little lip of the envelope I know you really can't see it but I've, I'm cutting in a few little strips so that it just makes it easier to fold the pattern paper over the curve of that lip there just making sure that the stuck down properly Oh, and I did ink the edges up on that pattern paper too. I think it I think it fit in pretty well with the purple. It was a paler colour, but yeah, I think it looked rather nice. Okay, so I want to put Lily's name on the front, so I've just grabbed a piece of paper to write out Lily's name first so that I could get the right measurement for it and now I'm just writing it down on the cover with a pencil and I'm going to use my hot glue gun and glue over her name so that I, it, it'll be raised up on the cover and right now I'm just using my pencil and I'm just roughly sketching out a design that I can paint later on it on the cover Not that I'm going to see this sketch much because after I've done the hot gluing of Lily's name um, I'm, I'm then going to put tissue paper all over the cover <laughs> just for a bit of added texture so I didn't even think of that once I'd done the sketching so here I am using the hot glue gun to trace over the name Lily and really like when I was thinking about doing this I thought it was going to be really hard but it's it's relatively easy so I'm going to give you a look at, at the word Lily at Lily's name just moving a few things out of the road and turning the hot glue gun off and it's a little bit hard to see you can just make out the glue in the shape of Lily but once I get it painted up after the tissue paper goes on it it's oh it just looks so pretty even if I do say so myself so I found some a movie a pale purple colored tissue and I'm giving it a good scrunch up just for a bit of added texture and I'm using my gel medium and I'm going to place the tissue paper all over it and pressing down over and around the shapes 
of the name. Well, that's a low flying plane. Sorry. Very, very busy this time of year. So I've got the front side of the cover um, done with the tissue paper and now I'm doing the back side. Just, and I'm also doing that little flap as well. So I'm, I put the gel medium down on the cover first and then I also give the top of the tissue paper a coat with the gel medium. Just going around making sure I've got it all stuck down everywhere. Making sure there's no big bubbles. Okay, so once that's dry, I'm just going around cutting off the excess bits of tissue paper. Making sure that there's nothing overhanging. And I also just grab a little bit of sandpaper. It's a fine sandpaper. And I'm just going around just giving the edges of the envelope a light sand. So I'm going, I'm started to paint the design on the envelope and I actually left this part in. I don't know what made me grab that coloured yellow, but after I looked at it, once it had dried, I just thought, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? So I put that down and I decided to work on the pages. Um, I did measure the pages out so that they would fit in the art into the cover. And even with the, I used this pad paper, like I think that pad cost me about $5 or something um, in one of our cheap shops here in Australia. And the paper, it's it's like a sketchbook, but the paper is pretty um, pretty durable. Like I've used it quite a bit, and I've made quite a few journals out of this paper. So I've measured the the papers, and even with the little offcuts that were a little bit smaller than the size, I've included those in the journal as well. And I'm just using my corner punch to go round and round the corners off. Just so that it looks just a, a little bit tidier. So I'm just gathering up all the pages together. Just making sure that I've got them the way that I want them. And in the right spot. I'm only going to do one signature in this envelope journal. And because I've got, I've put quite a few pages just in that one signature, um, 
the inside ones always seem to protrude out so I'm just lightly going down the edge and just tidying it up tidying up the side of those papers using a steel ruler and my cutting knife and then I realized that I didn't quite cut them straight <laughs> it does happen sometimes so I've done well to leave my mistakes in this video too so here I am I've grabbed the scissors and I'm just going along making sure that the side of those pages are straight I think I need a new blade in my little cutting tool okay so now it's done and <coughs> pardon me I've just remembered that that inside flap so um, instead of putting just a bit more of the pattern paper on it um, I decided just to put a bit of the purple down and just using the gun to to dry it quickly Okay, so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, this is where I'm going to start decorating the outside cover. And I've got some jade green acrylic paint, and I've started doing the stems and the leaves. On the couple of flowers that I'd sketched earlier that I can't really see because I did put the layer of tissue paper down but I still because I had that patterned idea in my head I could roughly work out where everything went And I didn't really want to put too much on the cover, but I didn't really want to leave it plain. So she could add her own little bits of embellishment and that if she wanted to anyway. So that's it so far, and I'm still looking at that yellow flower. <laughs> and this is where I decide to get rid of that yellow flower. And I've got some, I'm just using some pink and white acrylic paint. And I'm going in and I'm going over. Let's just say I base coated the flower with the yellow. It wasn't a mistake. <laughs> so I'm just going in and I really like the pink on the the pink and white on the purple. It turned out rather well. And I've got another couple of different flower designs that I'm painting onto the back side of the cover. And sitting here now, I'm thinking, why didn't I paint a lily on it? <laughs> it's funny, like an afterthought. Yeah, I should have painted a lily on it.
I think I actually got interrupted then by my husband. I don't know why I didn't edit that out. So I've given the flowers one coat of the paint and now I'm just going around and I'm putting a few little dots here and there just a little bit more to add a little bit more decoration to the cover and I'm just using the end of my paintbrush Oh, that's it. My husband asked me, did I want a cuppa? So there's my cuppa. <laughs> oh, dear. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear. So just, I think I ended up doing um, a couple of coats on the flowers. I was making sure I had all that yellow gone. So that's what they look like so far. Rather dainty, pretty. And now I'm just going and adding a few highlights to the leaves and the stems Nearly finished with the highlighting. Okay, now I'm going to work on the name. So I started off, I grabbed the silver because I thought, oh, that might be nice. But when I, I got halfway through the name and I just thought, no, it was just a wee bit too dull. It wasn't jumping out at me. So before that dried, I actually, I grabbed the paper towel first, but then I grabbed a, a wet a baby wipe and I managed to wipe most of that silver paint off and here I am I'm using <coughs> excuse me not too good today maybe I should have waited to do the voiceover <laughs> um, and now I forgot what I was saying oh um, I grabbed some of the purple acrylic paint and I'm going over and I'm painting on the raised up wording for Lily's name. And I, I really liked how it stood out more then with the dark, darker purple. just going around touching up little things here and there
just a few more little touch-ups and there you can really see the name now it looks lovely I think here I am rummaging through my old tin that I keep for any of my punched out images and I've got quite a few um, shapes of hearts in there so I'm picking out a couple of the different shaded pink hearts and I'm trying to decide which ones I want to place on the cover of the envelope art journal just going around working out where to put them all sitting back having a look thinking hmm that looks good no I'll move this one here <laughs> so I used um, like a little small heart for the dot of the eye in the lily it's a bit of a tongue tongue twister lily and now I'm just gluing the hearts down on the cover with some gel medium there we go And now I'm going around just outlining the leaves, the stems and the flowers. Moving everything out of the road. I kept I kept getting further and further away from <laughs> from the camera. So just outlining the flowers and putting just a few little lines, adding a few details here and there. And that's just using a black gel pen. Going around and outlining the big flower on the front of the cover. And now just going and putting a few little details on the hearts. thinking so far so good I liked how it was coming together and I, I just hope she likes it I think she will her mum's been telling me that she's getting her a few art journaling supplies for a birthday so I think my little handmade art journal will come in handy for her as well so here I am I'm ready to put the signature in I've measured the center of the book in the fold and I've gone in about an inch either side so that I can do the 
the pamphlet stitch binding. Just popping the holes in the signature. Now I'm looking for my crochet wool which I'm going to use to sew the signature in with. And I'm just having a little bit of trouble threading the needle as usual. <laughs> Some days I ask my daughter to do it for me. Okay, so here I am sewing in the signature. Starting off in the middle, then going out up through the top hole, then back through the centre and down to the bottom hole. And when I come back in again, that's where I'll tie it off. Making sure I just pull it nice and firm so that the pages aren't loose in there. Tying it in a couple of knots. And there you have it. And cutting off a bit more of that. I really did put too much of that organza ribbon on. And now I'm just going to have a quick look for a couple of little charms or beads. I was thinking that I was going to thread a couple of beads on the end of the ribbon just for a bit of weight, <coughs> pardon me, but I ended up um, using a little metal, a couple of little metal embellishments. Um, I think one was a little mirror and the other one was like a little, oh dear, I'm not sure if it was the handbag or the little lock. So I think it's in the shape of a little handbag. And I wanted both the embellishments hanging together. So here I am. Oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to making like jewellery or anything, I, I try my hardest, but I just get a little bit frustrated. All I'm trying to do now is open up that little, I think they call it a jump ring. And I wasn't having much luck. So I finally opened it up and I've got both the little metal embellishments on it. And there you are, managed to get the little charms on the ribbon that wraps around the journal for closure. And there you have it, my finished envelope journal, envelope art journal for a little friend of mine named Lily. So I hope she really likes it. I think it turned out rather well. There we go. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have a really good day.